Welcome to TFT Central. We're going to guide you through the best settings now for the ASUS PG27AQDM, the 27 inch OLED screen. So we're gonna start by opening up the on-screen display and the first thing you want to check is down in the system setup menu. We need to check that the power setting has been selected to standard mode. So it is in my case, so when I powered the screen on, I was asked to choose whether I wanted to use this and I said yes. Just make sure you've enabled that, otherwise you're going to have severely restricted brightness. Um, and what we're gonna do is set the screen up now for both wide gamut mode and sRGB mode, which can be used then in a range of desktop applications for movies, games, and the like. So we'll start with wide gamut mode. And what I like to do is use the uh, game visual menu and use the user mode for the best range of settings to change. So we're gonna select that first of all. Um, in this gaming menu, you can of course leave adaptive sync turned on or turn it off if you don't want to use that. All of the game additional settings like FPS counter and crosshairs you can use as you like. There's no need to change the shadow boost setting on this screen, so leave that off unless you particularly want to boost some of the darker scene content in specific games. And what we're gonna do now is set up for wide gamut mode. So you'll see that brightness defaults to 90 in this mode, but the main thing we're going to want to turn on here is uniform brightness. So we're gonna enable that first of all, and then we're going to set this screen brightness down to a setting of 44. Now that will return you a luminance of around 120 nits. I'll leave some other recommendations on the screen for getting to 150 nits or 200 nits. Obviously set this to however you like, uh, depending on your ambient room conditions and your preference. We like to use 120 nits, so we're going to set that to 44 here, which should return that nicely. So uniform brightness is turned on, so that will mean that as your content and your window size changes, you won't see any fluctuations in brightness. It will remain consistent. There'll be no need for the OLED panels ABL feature to kick in. Contrast can be left at the default 80 setting. Vivid Pixel at 50. Make sure that blue light filter is turned off. There's no real reason to use that on this screen. In fact, levels one, two, and three are actually cooler than the uh, settings that we're about to use. So that can be left off. Then down into the color menu, um, we're going to leave the display color space on DCI-P3. So that's the wide gamut mode. We're gonna set that up first of all. So that can then be used for any kind of wide gamut content working in the DCI-P3 color space, or if you prefer a more vivid and saturated appearance to your, well, just to your general desktop or certainly to your games or movies. We'll talk about HDR mode a bit later on. So this is just for SDR. And, and I'll also show you how to set up the sRGB mode in a moment as well. So for wide gamut mode, leave that, leave that on DCI-P3. Color temperature, we're going to want to use the user mode here. And then in the RGB channels, we're going to leave red at 100. We're gonna turn green down a little bit to 95. And we're gonna turn blue all the way down to 81. Now that will return you a white point of very close to 6,500K, so that's gonna be the optimal setup for this user mode. So 100 for red, 95 for green, 81 for blue. Um, everything else can be left at default. Gamma can be left at 2.2, that is fine. And as we did a minute ago, we've set the brightness at a comfortable level for 120 nits with the uniform brightness mode enabled. So that's actually all you'll need to change for a wide gamut setup. You can use that uh, whenever you like. Um, the other mode that we're going to do now is sRGB. So there is a way to change just simply the display color space in this section to sRGB, and that will emulate the smaller color space quite nicely. But the problem with that mode is that the color balance between RGB is then uh, not the same and so you would have to change that every time. So what we prefer to do is use the predefined game visual mode for sRGB So we can enable that Brightness will remain consistent across all your presets. So we're going to leave that at 44 It actually comes out ever so slightly brighter at around 125 nits But we're going to leave that as it is because we've just set that up for the wide gamut mode 
You'll see in here you do not have access to change the color space, it's defaulted to sRGB. You also don't have access to the color temperature anymore, but thankfully the default setup from ASUS is very close to 6500K white point anyway, so there's no need to change that, and there's no need to change gamma either. So there's actually not anything you need to change in the sRGB mode, and what you can do then is just quickly and easily switch between sRGB and user mode. Uh, and that's actually available, or this game visual section is available via the joystick by pressing up. It will give you a quick access to that. So you can very quickly switch between user mode and sRGB. So we're going to switch back to user mode for now. The only other thing you might want to check is down in the system setup and in the screen protection. These are the OLED image retention measures. Screensaver can be left on. There's no real reason to turn that off. That will just dim the screen when it detects long periods of static content, like if you've left the screen alone. Screen move. Now this will shift the screen a couple of pixels at a time periodically. Personally, I find this quite annoying for desktop use, although it is quite a useful feature for helping to mitigate image retention. Play around with those settings and see which mode you find suitable, or you can turn it off if you find it really distracting. Adjust logo brightness, that can be turned on. There's no real reason to turn that off. I didn't see any issues with that during normal or desktop usage. So leave that turned on and it will hopefully give you an added layer of uh, protection against image retention. The pixel cleaning cycle reminder. Now this can be set to any period of time just to prompt you if you've used the screen for a long period of time without a break and without the screen having turned off it will prompt you to run the cycle yourself. So it's probably best just to leave that on the eight hour reminder, but it will run the pixel cleaning cycle automatically when the screen is turned off after you've used it for a period of time anyway. So there are the OLED protection features. There should be nothing else you need to change in this menu. And so that is everything you need to set up now for wide gamut mode and sRGB. Now we're going to quickly go through the HDR mode as well. So I've enabled HDR in Windows. In this section, you'll see that the mode in the top right defaults to HDR mode. In this case, the ASUS Gaming HDR mode. Um, Adaptive Sync, you can turn on or off as you like. Same with the Game Plus settings for crosshairs and FPS counters and that kind of thing. In the image section, you don't have access to much here apart from the HDR mode. Now we found gaming, cinema and console to all be pretty similar in setup anyway at the moment. So choose whichever you like. Perhaps you might want to set one up as a warm mode and one as a cool mode, which I'll show you in a minute. But for now, we're just going to leave this on the gaming HDR mode. If you do find the screen too bright for any reason, you can select this brightness adjustable setting and then that will give you access to the brightness control again. So you could turn that down if you wanted to, but generally people are going to want to optimize the screen brightness and experience the maximum HDR brightness. So we'll leave that alone for now. The only real setting you have access to then is the color temp setting. And you'll see there's a 6,500K setting and an 8,200K setting, which is a cooler mode. Now, most people are going to want to use the more accurate 6,500K that's the default and we'd recommend using that. But if you did want to use a cooler mode, that will make the image look a little more blue and a little cooler, but it will give you a small bump in the peak brightness capability as well. So what you could do is use HDR gaming mode set to 6,500K and then use something like HDR cinema mode set to 8,200K and then be able to switch just between those two modes if you ever wanted to. But I think most people are going to want to just stick with the 6,500K mode and that's what we're going to use here. There should be no reason to change anything else. All the other screen protection features remain the same as before. So that is it for HDR mode.